The Wow Show is proudly sponsored by Waterstone Homes. Built for life. I'm Lisa Rogers. And I'm Paul Child. And this is The Welsh Show. On tonight's show, we trade blows with Nathan Cleverly and Joe Kazagi on our sofa. We've got music from Amy Wodge. We see the return of our favourite crazy Italian chef, Giovanni. And Paul visits Captain Beanie. Hello and welcome to The Well Show. Now, Paul, it is Valentine's this week. Have you planned something lovely for the missus? I haven't as yet, but I, I know I need to get on to it because it's coming down really, really quick. I know, and it's one of those things that just creeps up on you. And uh, Will you be in yeah. trouble if you haven't? I, f I forgot one year and I've never lived it down, so that will never happen again. Well done. I'd say I'm a bit anti-Valentine's. <laughs> it reminds me of school when like people get ten cards, clearly all from their mum and dad, you know, yeah. and I'd be like, oh, nobody fancies me. So, oh. yeah, so uh, me and, and the other half going out with a big gang of us on a big anti-Valentine's Valentine's dinner. Good, good, good. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you'll <laughs> Well, join us in the studio this evening. We've got two world boxing champions. It's Nathan Cleverly and Joe Calzaghi. Hey. hey! Guys, welcome to the studio. Now, uh, do you want to tell us exactly what your official titles are in the boxing world? <sighs> Full first or second first? Yeah, go on. I'm, trumps. I'm, Play the, trumps. I'm the current uh, light heavyweight champion of the world. Um, of the world! Because oh, of the right. world! It's, uh, it's going well. <laughs> go on. Oh, okay, a former undisputed um, superweight champion of the world of the top 10 years, 26 world title defences. You can Then a uh, light heavyweight champion with ring, mag ring magazine champion, a light heavyweight, then I retired. Because you relinquished the super middleweight to go up to yeah, the Yeah, I got a bit bored. I felt like losing weight all the time, you know. I was losing right. like two and a half stone a fight. And uh, when I got to 35, I thought to myself, you know, it's getting a bit bored, it's boring now. So when I uh, unified the title against Michael Kessler, I mean, Millennium, to me, that was the the great way to finish off, you know, that, because uh -huh. I had become a disputed champion beating Kessler. So I moved up and fought the States, you know, I fought in Vegas against Hopkins, and last last fight was Madison Square Garden in New York against Roy Jones, and then I decided, you know what, that's, that's it for me. I was injured all the time. My family wanted me to retire, my kids, and not many fighters can retire at the top. That's the thing, you know what I mean? It's like, um, it's harsh sport, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's because your last fight, and, you know, I was thinking to myself, I was 36, I was injured, and I thought to myself, you know what, I just... Just quit while you're ahead. It never happens. That's very, very sensible. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, people have said that to me as well. <laughs> what I do want to know is how do you lose two and a half stone? If I lost two and a half stone, mm. I'd disappear. Just sweat, suit, starving yourself and train two, three times a day. But you've got to do that and then go and fight. Well, luckily enough, the weigh-in's like 24 hours before, so <laughs> I can barely put, pick myself on the scales to, to weigh. I'm like, <laughs> can't get the minutes down to the, to the weigh-ins and just sat, sat there like this. And, but after the weigh-ins, you can, you, can, you can obviously rehydrate and eat what you want. So the time I get in the ring, I'm like a stone heavier than I was the day before. Wow, that can't be good for you, though, can it? I mean, it's, you know, you're putting your body through a lot, so I'd understand that as well as the boxing, why you'd want to call it a day, especially when you're at the top. Yeah, exactly, it's hard. I do miss it, though. I do miss it. Do you think it's the buzz? Because it's... So, I mean, the thing for me about boxing is the most um, sort of exact of sports. It's literally just one man or one woman against another, and you've just got to slug it out. I mean, yes. is that what it, the appeal is for you, Nath? It's, it's, it's a tough sport, you know, but the buzz from winning in boxing is, you know, it, it beats anything else because when you, you train the blood, sweat and tears in the gym for, for 10 weeks and then it's kind of, you're in that environment, just you and another trained fighter, it's magical and, and you win and it's, it's not a feeling like it, the buzz, and yeah, it just, it's true. just, it grips you, you know, it's, it's an addiction and... It's, um, yeah, it's the ultimate buzz. It's the it ultimate is. adrenaline buzz, isn't yeah, it? it is. And what do you what do you do now that you don't fight anymore? How do you kind oh, of fill boring. that gap? That was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just got to try and keep busy. I do a bit of TV stuff. You know, try myself with a bit of acting for a couple of years. Just thing to do. You know what I mean? And um, divide my time between London and the Wales, and got some business things I do as well. And just keep busy. You know, try and keep in decent shape as well. Don't really box, but run in most days. Just try to keep some level of fitness. I think that's important when you retire. Mm -hmm. Just try and keep a level of fitness, you know? Now, of course, famously, your dad, Enzo, trained you, and we had, we had him in the other week as well. We're still and trying to understand <laughs> what he said. Yeah, yeah, I, bet, I bet that was an experience, yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a great experience. He's got a translator. <laughs> kind of a subtitle. He's that? Brilliant, isn't he? I mean, you know, he's not like anybody else I've ever met, I it's think great, it's fair yeah, to say. Awesome. But your dad trains you as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, my dad's trained me now for the last couple of years. Um, obviously, Joe's dad trained me up into uh, to a certain point, and then um, my dad over the last couple of years has trained me. Similar, similar, really. You know, right. 
similar styles and uh, loads in common you know because yeah. obviously nathan joined the gym like nine ten years old yeah yeah all right yeah and sort of just come through the ranks you know and obviously lives literally like a mile from where i live right so he does the same sort of run the same routine he has the same work ethic you know and the same sort of uh i want to know what's in the water down there because it must be something good that we're you know breeding world champion that's fighters. all there is to do is fight in the valleys <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> i do well you listen know, so you either fight in the gym or you fight on a saturday night out yeah i'd rather get paid for it so the fourth defense is coming up in a few weeks time of your wbo yeah, March the sixteenth, um, defending my world title. So for the for the fifth time, actually, fifth defence. Um, same day as Wales, England rugby. So it's a nice double header, you know. Yeah. Because that happened last day. year, didn't it? As yeah, well, I remember yeah, it well. happened last year. So obviously, it's it's good when when Wales win in the rugby, and then Absolutely my good. success in the in the boxing ring in the night. It's uh, it's always always makes a good. Good double header. And there's a lot of special buzzers going up from the valleys, I understand, as well. To, to Wembley, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot. I've got a great support, great fan base, so they're coming up to support me in Wembley. Fantastic. So, uh, it's a, it's cool. a great evening. Oh, I think I might have to go. Yeah. I've, I've been promising to come to one of your, one of your fights for ages. I'm going to have to do it. Well, so that or Wales, England. Oh, we can do both. Because you, your fights don't usually start quite late, do they? That's right, yeah. Um, so I'm sure I'm, you, I'm sure Yeah, around 9pm, 10pm at night. Yeah, easy, yeah, easy do both. Yeah, you know, yeah. definitely. As long as you sort of sprint from the centre of Cardiff. <laughs> Guys, stay with us. We'll chat some more later on. It's great having you here. It's like the big Welsh boxing family. Now, you, Mr. Paul Child, have been to possibly one well, of the most bizarre museum in Wales. I got a call from Wales' own Captain Beanie, <laughs> who said, come and have a look at my big bean museum down in Sandfields, Port Albert. So I did. And yeah. this is where, <laughs> where you went. Have a look at this. You could go there on Valentine's Day. Why not? I've been in some weird and wonderful places in my time, but who'd have thought here in Wales is one of the weirdest and wackiest museums of them all, to the humble baked bean. The baked bean museum of excellence has been here in Portalbert since 2009, and as you can see all around me, we've got baked bean this, baked bean that, baked bean absolutely everything you can think of, and of course the creator is none other than Captain Beanie himself. How are you? Good evening. Thank uh, you very Paul, much for yeah. having it. Thanks for having us in. It's, it's uh, absolutely brilliant. How did this all start? Well, it went beanlistic when my alter ego Barry Kirk laid in a bat of baked beans for the world record 100 hours in a beanathon. And uh, ever since uh, Barry Kirk laid in a bath of baked beans, some, something really went into his sauciness. <laughs> right. And uh, he created this character called Captain Beanie, as you will see, uh, see now. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just a relevance that people have been uh, curious to know who Captain Beanie is and what he stands for, obviously. And someone said, well, where do you live? And I said, uh, just tentatively, I live in a big bean flat. And really, I said, yeah, it's full of half-baked and full-blown artifacts. <laughs> if I can say that, I don't know, on Sky TV. Uh, and here we are. It is a physical presence of this um, one and only Harrico Museum in the world. And this year you've been involved in the Keep Wheels Tidy campaign. That's right. Uh, my beans might have detected that there's some urgency on this planet of yours, on planet Wales. And uh, believe it or not, yeah, we're going to have a, a tidy tea break party. Uh, in honour of the 40th anniversary of Keep Wales Tidy and uh, believe it or not, they have been uh, free Welsh cakes donated to the first 200 participants of this accolade of the 40th anniversary and um, as you well know, I'm very penchant to the baked beans on toast Right. so I'm going to have a penchant for baked beans on Welsh cakes Oh, that sounds absolutely fantastic Wash, <laughs> Wash down with a, with a cup of bean colada as well know. Beautiful yeah. well, I'll tell you what, show us around a few more things in, in, in this fantastic museum we got Mr. Bean, we got Beanie Bears, we've got all sorts of other stuff. And, and what's this year? This well, as you well know, Paul, you know all these uh, marathon runs that I aspire to. Uh, I've got to keep my wind powers <laughs> in check. So, um, back on Planet Venus, I've actually got my own brand called Beantonium Baked Beans Rocket Fuel. Rocket Fuel. It, bean juice. It, been there, done that, and ran it as well. And uh, as you can see, it's um, full blown as well. And you can run like the wind. You can run like the wind. <laughs> yes, proverbial. <laughs> Well, as you well know, I collect all me memorabilia from all over the world. And tell you about the cufflinks, because it's a great story on that. Yeah, it? the cufflinks are very great relevance to a person who worked for a big bean company 
And can you believe, after 20 years of half-baked services to a good cause, he was presented with these um, <clears throat> much desirable baked bean, bean cufflinks. Cuff Fantastic. That's what you get for working 20, wow. 25 years in a baked bean factory. They don't give you a clock, they give you a baked bean cufflinks. How about that? And here on the Captain Beanie Wall of Fame, we've got some of the people who've been to the museum over the years, including Danny Wallace, who of course opened it for you. Yeah. Uh, and who's this fellow up here? Ah, uh, believe it or not, this is um, the one and only Jake Humphreys. Of course. Uh, the famous celebrity Formula One commentary. Fantastic. Yeah. And of course, we've got some pictures here from all these, some of the charity stunts you've done over the years as well, including this one, climbing Mount Snowden with a plate Plate? of baked beans on toast. That's right, it's a bean head on it, and <laughs> conquered it now. There we are, this is my autobiography if you want to like to produce exactly. the book. And uh, as you can see, it's all written up and uh, from the start to the beginning. And um, this is a colouring book. Yeah, well, you know, you're going to make a start, uh, Paul. Uh, I mean, it's not totally finished yet, but you can understand it. It's, uh, all right, okay. Fair enough. Like, and, uh, and you've got an album up? I have. Yeah. I have. It's called um, Cabin Beanie. It's I Just Love Baked Beans. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> apparently it's the only one on my planet um, that is uh, number one in the charts. You're on your planet, number one? Yes. Uh, um, number one on my planet as well. Yeah, because Fantastic. the relevance is, um, <laughs> it's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Well, Captain Beanie, thank you so much for showing us around this fantastic museum. Thank you, sir. And don't forget, Keep Wales Tidy Day is on March the 1st, and the first 200 people to register on the Keep Wales Tidy website will get themselves a free pack of the Welsh cakes. I'll have my mind without the beans if you don't mind. Now that looked quite bizarre, but you did enjoy it by the looks of things. I did enjoy it. It was a bit bizarre, and it's a bit windy down there in Botalbot as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'd like to suggest anywhere for us to visit over the next few weeks, uh, contact us via our Facebook page or on Twitter at The Welsh Show. Yeah, or you can get us our info at thewellshow.tv if you want to email us. It's on the screen right now. And we'll be back after the break with more from Joe and Nathan. The Welsh Show is proudly sponsored by Waterstone Homes. Built for life. The Welsh Show would like to hear from you. It's your show, so why not get in touch and tell us what you think? And let us know what you'd like to see on the show in the future. You can contact us via email on info at thewellshow.tv and for regular updates on guests and show dates, follow us on Twitter at The Welsh Show and find us on Facebook or visit thewellshow.tv. Darren Goff. The English cricketer. Shumai? Uh, Shumai Darren. You do know this is for Collier's powerful Welsh cheddar? Big problem. Are you familiar with Collier's? Familiar? Oh, I love Collier's. It eats me for six. It's the powerful taste of Wales. Collier's, a powerful taste of Wales. Buongiorno, my name is Giovanni Malacrino, owner of Giovanni's Restaurant. For the last 30 years, we've cooked for famous celebrities and some fantastic customers. Nice. It's dangerous, you know. No fire. And Max, I'm singing without you. This St. David's Day, join Paul Child and the Welsh Television Orchestra at the Princess Royal Theatre in Port Talbot. Joining Paul will be comedian Phil Evans, plus a host of special guests. The Paul Child St. David's Day Concert, Friday, March the 1st at the Princess Royal Theatre, Port Talbot. Tickets from just £12.50. Call now or visit www.paulchild.com. <laughs> 